Live from her little spot in the universe, Ginger Quinlan. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Butterfly Effect radio show here on All One Broadcasting. We're having a wonderful night. We have new shows coming on to this station, and I'm so excited to welcome Julie and Joe, and we had great interviews with them with Craig previously, so I just want to say welcome aboard. I hope you have fun here. We're a nice little family of show hosts that want to bring quality entertainment to all of you who are listening here at A1B, so welcome, everybody. I hope you're having an awesome Wednesday night. I'm so excited to have my dear friend Maureen McGill joining me here on the Butterfly Effect radio show. She is the most awesome tarot card reader that I know, actually, because she's incredibly precise. She never, ever sugarcoats what's going on. She tells you what the cards mean. She's straight up about what they're saying to you. And I know for me, when I get a reading from Maureen, it's all positive. It's all to the point, it's quick, and she's pretty much always right. (laughs) I love getting readings from Maureen. So for that reason, I asked her to come on the show tonight and talk about what she does. She's also an amazing author. She's written live from the other side, which is incredible stories about loved ones who lost folks from the other side and have connected with folks from the other side. It's a really, really good book, but I'll let you let Maureen tell you more about that. She's also just a really awesome friend. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Maureen. Thank you so much, Ginger, for having me on. I'm so honored to be on the show with you, a Thank gifted you. medium, and you're so talented yourself, sister. <laughs> well, thank you. We're going to be talented together tonight on this show because it's a call-in show. So let me just uh, give out the number. We're going to talk to Maureen for a few minutes first uh, before we take calls. So if you can just hang on a little bit before you call in. The call-in number, however, is 1-803-580-5177. But be patient. Give us five or ten minutes to meet Maureen. So, Sister Tell us, who is Maureen? Well, thank you. My name's Maureen McGill, and um, I live in the Northwest. I live in the Pacific Northwest, actually in Tacoma, Washington, which is outside Seattle, Washington. And it's actually a beautiful sunny evening here. We had overcast during the day, and now the sun has come out to set, and it looks beautiful out here right now. But anyway, I'm an associate professor of dance, of all things, at Pacific Lutheran University, which is a private institution here in the Pacific Northwest, four-year college. And um, I have always felt that the awareness extends beyond the body, and then so I've gotten interested in the intuitive arts. I teach classes in body, mind, and spirit, and in healing. So that's kind of how I got interested in it. I've also worked with the Breast Cancer Resource Center here in Tacoma, but now my keen interest has really been in the intuitive side of uh, of life and death, the spiritual side, and I wrote this book called Live from the Other Side with co-author Nola Davis, and Nola is the CEO of a healthcare corporation here in Tacoma where she works with people at the end of life. Anyway, together we wrote this book. We collected messages from loved ones who have died, and they've given us their messages from the other side to ordinary people, not people who particularly have mediumship gifts or just ordinary people, engineers, teachers, and they gave us these beautiful stories. So together we wrote this book, added a little poetry about why some people connect and why some people don't connect, and it was published by Ozark Mountain Publishing, and it's available on Amazon and Kindle, and it's called Live from the Other Side, kind of just like Saturday Night Live. And now I'm working on a second project. I'm on sabbatical this year from the institution, and I'm working on a second book, and it's about messages that our loved ones give us who have died in any war. So I'm getting very healing messages from widows and widowers who have lost their loved ones in the war. And some people might say, oh, that's so sad that you'd want to work with that, but you know what? The messages are very healing. 
and they give so much support and love, unconditional love messages to those who are here to help them to move forward out of the grief and into the lightness of being. And you're still looking for stories, correct? I am. I'm looking for stories, especially any family members that might have stories of any loved ones who died in any war. Love to have any kind of stories that you might have, experiences. Maybe you've smelled your loved one. Maybe you felt their touch. Maybe you had an incredible dream about them. And, you know, war can be so tragic because it can be so sudden in terms of the death. So it's so healing when um, the loved ones receive a message uh, from them. And they can send stories or contact you at Maureen at LiveFromTheOtherSide.com, correct? Yes, that is correct. Awesome. I will also have a link to that on my website at GingerQuinlan.com. So if you want more information or you want to connect with me and I connect you with Maureen, we can do that and uh, get those stories to her so she can get this book out there because I think it's going to be an amazing book. Uh, thank you. <laughs> because, you know, live from the other side, when I read it, when I had you and Noah on last year to interview you, I love that little book. It's not a really big book to read, but it's crammed full of amazing heartfelt stories. And I couldn't put it down. I read it three times. <laughs> Oh. Because the stories and the poetry and the things you put in it were so beautiful because me, as a medium, I listen to people from the other side and share stories with people who are living and so many of the things that were in that book, it was just so well written and it spoke to what I do every single day and what I hear a lot with other people. And if you're not a medium and you're not aware of those messages and how to connect that book. Oh, it just has some awesome information about, just like you said, normal people, normal connections, and all the healing that takes place. So kudos to you and Noah for writing that. Oh, thank you so much. And I honor your gifts. You know, I really feel like mediums are the formal portal of communication to the other side. And what a gift it is that you can share that with people because it's not always easy to be that messenger for them. To be Thank the you. No, it's not. It's hard. There's some days when I finish my job and I just have to go sit down in my big comfy recliner and cry. <laughs> just because some of the things that I've heard are so painful or so beautiful, it just brings up all that emotion. It's a hard job, but you know what? I wouldn't change it for the world because it has so many aspects to it that are loving and kind and beautiful. It's like the best job. And I bet it really brings resolution for so many problems that people may have died and, and that resolution just wasn't there before they died, and it brings so much resolution to those who are living so that they can move forward, you know? It absolutely does, Maureen, because so many people die suddenly. It's poof, they're gone there is no wrapping up loose ends. There's no telling people that they love them. It's just heart attack gone or a car accident gone. And so loved ones are just kind of left there going, but I didn't get to say what I needed to say to him or her. And as you know from writing your book, that's one of the most painful things that linger in our hearts, I think, for a long, long time until you finally get some closure and get to talk to them. Yes, and you know, uh, Nola brings up a good point about that. A lot of times we're left here and we just continue to send them the message, gosh, you're dead, you're dead, you're dead. And it's like the phone line is dead when it's that way. But instead of just asking them the, the question, setting your intention and see if they might come to you in a dream and taking out that vibration of thinking that they're completely gone because there is a level of consciousness that they don't die, you know, that they are around. It's just that we can't hug them or we can't kiss them or... You know, we can't have that um, conversation that we would have if they were here, but we can have a kind of conversation if we just open sometimes. I agree completely, and thank you for saying that. I think we all forget that even though we all pass away, our spirits go on, our soul continues off wherever souls go, and they bop in and out. They check on us. They want to let us know they're okay, and... I think we as humans get so busy in our lives, we totally forget to pay attention. Yeah, we really do. We do. So let's talk about what you do because 
you read tarot cards. You know, I, I love tarot cards, and I have a great mentor and teacher. Her name is Arlene Tognetti here in the Northwest. Arlene's published many books on astrology and the tarot, and I used to go for an astrology reading once a year in September at my birthday time. Yay. And, and she encouraged me to then study it. And so I, I just went forward and I studied and actually used her guide, which is an idiot's guide. You know how they have an idiot's guide to everything? Mm-hmm. Well, the idiot's guide to tarot and astrology, and I began with that, and then I started to begin with her, her classes and teachings, and then just continued to do the work, and it seemed to really open up that window of a uh, portal of communication here with intuition, just opening that side. I think we all have that side of ourselves that we just trust our gut, you know? So did you find it difficult to get started with tarot, or was it really, really easy for you? You know, it just seemed really easy, and I don't know if that's because of my work in dance that I really believed that there was an extended awareness beyond the body, or I just really trusted that gut feeling. You know, everybody kind of has that gut feeling. Sometimes you can walk into a party and you can be having a conversation with someone, and you know that somebody is looking at you from behind, and you turn around, and sure enough, they're there. They're just like right there. It's like you don't have eyes in the back of your head but you had that sense that they were staring at you. So, you know, it's really that sense that awareness that extends beyond your sight. You know? mm-hmm. So tarot is very different than mediumship. Let's talk about how you do your readings. If, if someone calls you to get a reading from you, what is it they need to do or think about or bring to you when they call you? I think what's helpful is for them to set their intention on a question. I like to bring a question about love, money, work, family, career, travel. And um, from that question, then I can open the door to using the symbols and seeing what the symbols mean uh, for an interpretation of the answer of their question. And I have to say, you are so gifted in knowing symbols and knowing your cards. You're like rapid-fire reader. (laughs) <laughs> the first time I got a reading from you, I was like, holy cow, this person absolutely knows her tarot inside and out because you were just like, bam, bam, bam. And I was like, oh, I haven't heard somebody do tarot like that since Eileen Connolly, who wrote all the tarot books, all the guides to tarot. She, she was incredible. And you're right up there because you know your tarot inside and out. So... I was totally impressed with you, and I thought, oh, when you start doing this full-time, which I know you will, um, (laughs) you're going to have a long line of clients. (laughs) Uh, Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're welcome. And, you know, we're open tonight for anybody to call in and ask their questions, or maybe even the chat room. It looks like there may be some people that might have a question in the chat room. Awesome. If you're wanting to call in, the number is one. 803-580-5177. And we will open up the lines now and do precision tarot readings. (laughs) Okay, so I'm looking in the chat room. Hmm. So do you use mediumship when you read your cards, Maureen? Well, you know, I wouldn't say that it was formally mediumship at this point. You know, I never studied mediumship like you did in a formal kind of way. But I do call it intuition, and intuition guides me. And I'm sure that there are people from the other side or angels or higher beings or whatever helping guide me here in my work. But I wouldn't call it, as you do, the formal portal of communication in mediumship. But Mm -hmm. maybe it's similar, you know. (laughs) I use the cards as symbols, and they seem to connect. So, All right. Well, we have a caller, area code 803. Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. You're with Maureen McGill. Hi, Maureen. Hi, Ginger. This is Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Do you have a question? Yes, I do. I was, I was talking to a friend today, and I, attend, um, Argosy, I attended Argosy University online. And they're under investigation for inappropriate behavior. And my concern is, um, is the school going to lose their accreditation? 
Okay, so Kelly, I didn't quite get your question. You wanted to know if the school is going to be in jeopardy of accreditation or this person? Losing it. Losing it. The school? I just, yeah. Hmm. I found out that they're under investigation. Because she just graduated from I just completed about two years ago. Okay, so I did three uh, three piles on it, and I'm going to ask if the school's in jeopardy of losing that accreditation. And it says they, have, they do have to change something right now, Ten of Swords. They've got to finish something up, and um, it, and it's a judgment that they're having about a certain individual, or it could have been also a financial thing. I'm not really sure. There's a lot of fear yeah. around it right now. Um, hello? Hello? Hi. Uh, Caller from 810, we're on the line with another caller, so please be patient with us. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Maureen. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so anyway, um, I think there's a little bit of fear about this decision. Somebody's going to hold the lantern for the truth. Um, somebody wants to offer kindness and make this right, and four of wands, there's going to be a meeting about it. There's the institution, Queen of Pentacles, and it's also going to... There's also a financial aspect to this whole decision about right, whether they're going to lose it or not. So right. that's all I'm really getting is that this the, the wish is there. There's a pushy woman that's fighting for it. I, I believe she's an administrator or something. The wish is uh-huh. there. I don't think they're going to lose it myself, but they're definitely uh-huh. changing something right now. So maybe it's a policy that's thing good. or because something like because that. my thing is I just completed my degree two years ago and. Um, now they're saying, because I've read stuff online because a, a former classmate have called, called me and told me this, and, you know, the job is, jobs are scarce because of the economy the way it is, but I would still be financially responsible for paying back that loan, even if they did lose the accreditation. And I'm just scared because I don't want to go back. I, I completed my school education, and I don't want to go back to school. Is what I'm yeah, I really don't know what the policies are on that. Like once, like if they did lose their accreditation, what what your responsibility would be around, you know, your degree being legitimate or not. But I mean, you received it when when it was accredited. So yeah, I would think that that would override it. If that's your question, is that your question? Yes, yes, it is. Okay, I think that would be. Okay, it's emotional right now, and there's some choices that the school is making, but it has it it has to do with this money distribution, and I don't know what that has to do with and working yes. on it. And yes, yes, that all makes sense. I don't know if there's some tax saying. issues around it too. There may be some tax tax issues that have to be solved, but yes. I don't see the end the end all here in my card. Okay, but maybe Ginger cool. would like to give some aspects on it. I don't see you having to go back to school. And I don't see them losing their accreditation. I think they're going to be investigated, but it's going to take yes. probably two or three years for them to get all the information they're looking for. Okay. Because <laughs> when I got when I got that email call today, I was like, oh my, <laughs> because I would still be responsible from for my financial aid lender to pay that back, whether I have it or not. Ooh, and, that would be rough. Yeah. Exactly, and at the mastery level degree part of things, you it's expensive, and I would still be financially responsible for it. Wow. And I'd be paying for something I don't have. So when I got that call this evening or this late, after, late this afternoon, I panicked. Okay. I'm sure. Oh, <laughs> oh. Well, now you can take okay. a breath. Cause Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for Love calling quick, in. You're welcome. Have a Bye. great night. Bye. You too. Bye bye. We have another Ooh. caller from area code eight one zero. Hello, caller. Welcome to the show. Hi, Ginger. Hi. Who's this? Hi, Maureen. Hello. Hello. Are you there? Yeah. Hi, Maureen. Can she hear me? I don't know. Did we lose Maureen? We lost Maureen. Let me go get her. (laughs) 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 So I am trying to see how to call Maureen here. Sorry, everybody. You know what, Karen, can we just take a quick break while I get Maureen back? 
That would be wonderful, and we'll see you on the other side of the break. And, Caller, just hang with us for a minute, okay? Okay.
We're going live. You're live. Hello. Welcome back to the Butterfly Effect. We're just having some issues with Skype, but we have figured it out. And my awesome producer, Karen, has saved the day. For those of you wanting to call in, do not call the 803 number. We will have a different number for you to call in shortly. So please be patient with us. Area code 810 will be giving you a different number to call in. So stop calling me on this 803 number and we will let you get a reading with Maureen. So welcome back to the show, Maureen. Thanks so much, Ginger. Sometimes glitches happen. It's almost full moon. It's all about the glitches. Oh, that's right. That's coming up, isn't it? Is that Thursday tomorrow? Or- tomorrow at I think it's seven twenty-two. Can't remember if it's AM or PM. But uh yeah, big full moon. Very um powerful and very magical. If you want to release things, tomorrow is the day to do it. Very good. Bring it mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have some people in chat who are wanting to call in, but we're going to have a different number for you to call in. And I'm reading questions right now. Oh, I have a question for you. Great. <laughs> I have someone in the chat room who wants to know how long Brian Dunning the anti-conspiracy and anti-fraud pseudo-skeptic is going to go to jail for his part in the real wire fraud conspiracy where he and others kind eBay out of billions of dollars. So he wants to know how long is Brian Dunning going to go to jail for? Well, I'll give it a shot here. Depends on how much money he has. <laughs> Page of <laughs> Pentacles, there's some money around this guy. Tower... There's the eight car. He's got a lot of fear right now. There's a female attorney or somebody that's fighting for him or around him. There's going to be an offer. This isn't the only thing that he's done. It seems like he's getting caught at several things. And just, I don't know, there's this level of delusionary ness about the whole situation. There's a lot of loss. And you know what? I just don't have a number on it necessarily. There is some heartache. He's going to have to pay a lot of bucks to um, get out of whatever he needs to get out of. But um, he's in a a lot of big problems here with the government. I've got Justice Card, Five of Swords, and Ten of Swords. He's going to be in the clink, I think, for for quite some time. But I don't have a number on that. I was hearing two, but then I heard 20. So I feel like he's going to be gone for a long time. Really long time. So we have a new call in number, which is 1 267 519 1707. If you're wanting to get a reading with Maureen, please call 1 267 519 1707. Thank you, Karen. You're the most awesomest producer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So uh, we have another question, um, which is, and, and I don't know if you want me to say your name about this or not, but I have someone in the chat room who wants to know if either one of us can tell her who her guides are and anything about them. But tarot doesn't totally do that, does it, Maureen? You know, it doesn't necessarily, but I can certainly do a spread on it. And um, let me see if I can... Do a spread and see what happens about who their guide might be or what their personality might be. Who are, who are those guides around this person? Um, and I'm doing three piles. And um, it's like there's this woman that's their guide that's helping them work on things. She could be a grandmother or a motherly figure of some kind. It seems like she'll know because the, the angel Gabriel is there saying, you know, have patience. It's like... And spirit is there. And I think that she's going to be able to find out who this is in her dreams because it's resting and retreating is when she'll be able to connect with her. There's Mm -hmm. family members on the other side who are helping her. And there's definitely a male uh, guide as well, King of Swords, who's helping her. And there's family members on the other side that keeps showing up. And I don't know who that is, but that's what I get. Fantastic. 
we have callers back. Yay. Area code 810. Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. You're on air with Maureen McGill. Hi, Ginger. Hi, Maureen. Hi. Sorry about the techie issues. (laughs) Oh, that's okay. Uh, Maureen, could you tell me, is there anyone around me from the other side that wants to, that has any messages for me? Okay. Can I ask who this is? Yeah, my name is Julie. Julie, okay. Let me ask. Is there anybody on the other side that has a message for you? Has a special message for Julie. So I put the cards in three piles. Can you pick a pile, one, two, or three? Two, please. Okay. So I picked the second pile, and there's a message. It says you are getting indirect messages from the other side, which is the star. And the star connects us to the other side. To me, it's the highest card in the deck. That's hope, faith, light, beauty, and grace. In the world, let's see. The message is that there's something unexpected coming. It says your intuition knows what this unexpected thing is. And that's not a cop-out for me, but I, I did get the high priestess card. In your fears, sometimes it's just fear itself, but hold the lantern for the truth about these messages. There's a message coming from... Dead power and authority and some kind of offer. Things are going to be coming in fast. It's around either the government or the truth, because that's the hero font card, or business. And it says, don't take on too much right now. There is a messenger of love near you and coming to you. And it's something about home and top dollar and a money distribution. So something good is coming for you. You're going to be able to walk to a new way of being in this message and be patient and have strength. Great. Thank you very much. That's awesome. (laughs) Yes. I keep hearing there's a grandmother around you, too, a really beautiful grandmother who wants you to know that she is watching over you the last three to four weeks because you've had a lot of stress around you. Do you understand this? Yes. Yeah, so she just wants you to know she's sending you kisses, and she says just keep hanging in there because you've been really stressed, and like Maureen said, there's new money coming to you, and she wants to really say, believe that. It's coming. So, oh, that's wonderful. She's actually backing up what Maureen said. I love when that happens. Um <laughs> Uh so she also says her chest doesn't hurt and she can breathe fine there was something going on with her lungs and her throat do you understand this yes i do yes and she can breathe fine and she's just telling me this so you know who is talking to you and again i see her like blowing bubble kisses at you like little little heart bubbles at you oh that is funny because two days ago i found like a you know how old paper gets yellowed and it and it and it's real fragile when you touch it, it cracks. Yes. Okay. Well, just random in my kitchen. I walked in the kitchen. On the floor was one of them old paper hearts. Aww. It was just an old, old, so old. When I picked it up, it cracked. Wow. And I just held it together and I set it on my dresser, and it's just a plain heart. From her. That's why she keeps showing me that she's sending you kisses and she's blowing bubble kisses at you okay, and hearts and all of that. It's just like Valentine's Day at your house. Aww. And that's what that page of stories is, little indirect messages that come to you to pay attention to. How beautiful, Ginger. How lovely to share that with her. Yes, mm-hmm. that is beautiful. Now I know where the heart come from. That's why I wanted to ask that question, who was coming through, because I knew it was somebody. I didn't know who was trying to give me hearts. Now you know. Grandmama. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. It gives me goosebumps. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, well, lady, so much tonight. Thank you. You have a beautiful night, and thanks for calling into the show. You too. Thank Good you. night. Thank Good you. Night. We have another caller. So, area code 310. Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. Hello. Hello. Hi, Wendy. How are you tonight? I'm doing well. I'm uh, uh, inside track with Maureen. <laughs> we, we've spoken <laughs> before, Ginger, and I'm a, I'm a dear friend of, of Maureen's, so I wanted to give my support, and I'm enjoying the show very much. I just got off work. I was walking up the hill, found uh, 
your show called on in. So thank well, you awesome. very much. Do you have Hello, a question? To... I'm sorry. Do you have a question? Well, you know, um, I would love to hear from the other side if there's any message from spirit for me. Okay. Do you want me to take this, Maureen, or do you want to chime in, too? It would be lovely, Ginger. All right. So let me see who's around you. I love your energy. Uh, So beautiful. Um, Thank you. You know, you have two people around you, Wendy. One's really tall, uh, a male, and he says hi. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure he's, like, super tall as he is super confident and has kind Uh of a big, strong personality. Because he's awesome. showing me, like, strength inside and out. Do you understand this? Mm-hmm. I do. Yes. And he very says, much so. Good, good. It feels very fatherly to me. Um, very paternal type energy. He has his hand over his heart, and then he's opening up his hand like, you're my heart. You're my, you're my love. That's how he feels to me. And he's saying this to you. And he wants you to know he's been all around you, especially... The last six to ten weeks, because you've had a lot of things changing and going on, and he's saying, I'm around you, and I want to call you Peacock. I don't know why I want to call you that, but I'm hearing Peacock. Okay. Is Someone's father... acting like a peacock. <laughs> <laughs> is, yeah. Is your father in spirit? No, but I have a, a grandfather in spirit. All right. I feel like he was just really very, very confident, stood very straight, and kind of did strut his stuff. But I keep hearing Peacock. Um, Mm -hmm. But he wants you Mm -hmm. to know that he's all around you, and he loves you so much, and he's so proud of you, and he stands even straighter when I say that. It's like maybe he is the Peacock. Um, But he just sends so much love to you, and he likes your hair. I want to, like, pet your hair for him. (laughs) Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I've got, I've got hair. That's for sure. Thank you. There's also a woman coming through that says she loves you as well. Um, she's a little bit stern. I get kind of a stern, kind of erect, kind of rigid feeling from her. She's a tough lady. I feel yeah. like she had kind of a tough life too. Mm-hmm. And she's saying that she misses cooking. And she misses sewing. I keep seeing sewing or doing something with her hands. And Mm -hmm. she misses that very much. And you're very much like her. You're creative like her. And she wants you to know she's around you when you're doing your creative work. And she calls it creative work. Um, Mm -hmm. And I keep wanting to, like, adjust my glasses on my face when I feel her. I feel like she fiddled with her glasses and her hair a lot. And was always trying to adjust them. And she says that she would misplace her glasses and, I want to say, hair mm-hmm. clip. She was always fidgeting. Do you understand this? Uh, I had to go with her for her glasses one time, I remember. Okay. She doesn't miss doing any of that anymore. <laughs> sure, for she's, sure. She's laughing about it, but she has an awesome sense of humor. And she wants you to know that she's around you and she comes to visit you every single day. Okay, thank you. She's constantly with you. And do you know a Betty? My mom's name is Beverly with a B. Ah, okay. She's sending love. Very good. Yeah, yeah. she's sending love to this person. That's her daughter. Awesome. Yeah. And I feel so much pink energy with that, which is all unconditional love. And then she's <laughs> directing it at you. So she's just saying, I'm sending this beautiful energy to you. Gorgeous lady. Thank you tough cookie that one <laughs> do you have any uh, well, other yeah. questions yeah what did she think of uh, the the man with the J <laughs> she's smiling and she has her hand over her heart and I see the tall peacock man with the hand over his heart too and they're both yeah. opening their hands up so I feel like they have loving approval for J mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay Morning. So there's like she's my backup. She's my backup place. But yeah, nice. that, it's, it's lovely to visit with my um, with the afterlife and and my grandparents. They they were I was very very close with them, 
and I, I feel them, I, I, I honor them, and I, I thank you for your gift to bring them, bring them forward. And I, it would not surprise me for my uh, grandmother to um, highlight my mom because uh, she's not doing too well with her health right now. So uh-huh. thank you for, for doing that. So, you know, I have to just share with you um, the very tall, tall man. I was thinking, you know, everyone talks about guides and spirit guides, and I did a very deep meditation on uh, John Edwards' um, CD. One day I'm going to know whether or not this is for real, but the guide that came through for me is Wilk Chamberlain. And I, I did the meditation on Sunday, and then I called Maureen. I said, I did the meditation, and then... She confirmed for me that I was Will Chamberlain because she said she was just listening on the radio for sports and it was all about Will Chamberlain. So when you said you had a very tall man there, I said, yeah, there's Will. But maybe it was my grandfather because he was a big man. Wow. That gave me goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> you have awesome. it. Thank you very much. I didn't want to take up any more time I, I would, for more uh, listeners to get an opportunity to work with both of you. And Maureen is an outstanding intuitive terrorist. Not terrorist, but a tarotist. <laughs> she's really got it going on. And, and she's a wonderful, wonderful friend, mother, no daughter, and a great healer. So anyone who gets a chance to read with both of you ladies are so very lucky. Thank you for the opportunity and thank you for letting me um, connect with my grandparents. I love them. So I I, with that, I will say goodbye. Mindy, I also picked some cards for you, though. Uh, Okay, we'll go fast so the other gals and guys can get to you, Maureen. It says you're coming home to success. you got the six of swords. you got travel coming soon. There's an unexpected meaning around the work and the friendship. And in this meeting, the magician card is there, so you're going to unleash your creative energies. You stand as the nine of pentacles with the resources. They're coming in with the bird in hand, in your hand. There's a king of wands, a country gentleman, kind of animals, children, good-natured guy who wants to offer kindness to you, and seven of pentacles. There is some really work that's going to be mounting here that is going to bring you the abundance that you would like. The empress is with you. You just can't see everything clearly yet, but the chariot is coming along this trip that's coming soon. So good luck, sister. Thank you very much, you beautiful women. All right, uh, I'll sign off now. You take care, everybody. Thank Take you. care. Take okay, care. bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. You're listening to the Butterfly Effect Radio with Maureen McGill, awesome tarot reader, and we have another call. You ready for another reading, Maureen? I am ready. All right, area code 320. Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. Hello. Hi. Who's this? Hi. I um, have a question. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, about my next year in life with family and health, and um, everybody staying healthy around me, and having no more heartache around us. Right. And your name is? My name is Andrea. Andrea. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Are things going to be better for the family and less heartache? Okay. I've got three piles. One, two, or three. Which pile? Three. Okay. It just says, I don't know, there's some creative energy that's being unleashed here. You're just kind of holding the fort for everybody. And also there's a man around here who's been kind of helping. The kids are offering kindness. Family does stand together. That's the first outcome. There's been a little depression there, sadness. But in your fears, it's all about choices. There's going to be two things that will be juggled. One thing is kind of going to be finished up. And I don't know what that finishing up is. It could have to do with a marriage or a system or something in the family that hasn't worked that's no longer going to be a burden. One person's going to walk away from that. There's going to be a sale of a property or a money distribution. Just be patient when all that takes place. There's maybe some person in the family that hasn't been trusted or there's been some issues around um, a financial matter, but it'll be over with soon. That like, That's a done deal when that comes up. And there is somebody either around you who's supporting you, but he takes out his sword and he says, you know what, we can't do it like this, and things will be better. So if that makes some sense to you in terms of what's happening around the family, that's what my cards say. That makes lots of sense. Um, Ginger, is, is my father around me at all? 
Yes. You have two men around you, actually. One's very tall and kind of thin. I feel like he was really frail before he passed. I don't yeah. feel like he can talk very well. In fact, I'm losing my voice while I'm feeling him. And I don't feel like he was able to say anything before he passed. Does that sound like your father? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is telling me that he no longer has those issues. And there is no feelings of an elephant sitting on his chest. Do you understand this? Yes. Yes, because he's saying that it felt like there was an elephant sitting on him every single day. And he could not say the things he wanted to say. And it frustrated him to no end because I feel like your father wanted to tell everybody how he felt and what he needed to finish up and what was going on with him, but he couldn't do any of that. Do you understand this? Yes. Yes. So he has regret about that and he wants to express it, but I feel like now in spirit, his energy is lighter. He just wants you to know that he wanted to tell you how incredibly proud he is of you and that you're very strong and now you know it. And you didn't know it when he was passing. You were having issues then. And he's saying that you've come so far. And he wants you to know that he's watching every step you take along the way. And is very proud. Very, very proud. He keeps saying that. And I almost want to cry when I feel him. Because it's just so much overwhelming love coming out of this beautiful man's art. While he's talking about this. And I feel like he wanted to say it so bad before he passed. And he just couldn't. So he wants to really express it to you now. He also uh, wants you to know he watches out for the boy. So do you have a son? Yes, I have a son that passed away. Ah, well, he watches out for the boy. So the boy is right next to him because they see him with his arm around him. And was your son really young? Yes. Because he looks little to me. Yeah, he was and three I months old. a very child child, young child energy. I don't hear a lot of words, but what I do see is like this really expressive waving, (laughs) like mommy, 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 kind of waving. And and like if you've been gone a long time and you walked in the door and he would run to you, that's what he shows me. So that's what he wants to tell you, that he runs towards you and he's excited to connect with you right now. And he likes to come visit you. He also likes to, what is that? He likes to hit the wind chime or the bell and make it ring. Do you understand this? No. There's some kind of bell or some kind of ding that he makes to let you know that he's around. It's very light. It's very fairy-like. And he likes to do that. Okay. I'll have so to pay my ears open for it. Yes, because he's trying to say that he's around, but it's really light, and it's really kind of airy-fairy, and it's just a real light ding when he does it. It's nothing so obvious and in your face. It's just real light and real childlike. So watch for them. They're both right there together. Perfect. That's awesome. It is. Do you have any other questions? Um, Am I going to have babies? More babies. I'll let you take that one. Yeah. I'm sorry, I could not hear her question. Oh, she wants I was to know wondering if, if I'm going to have more babies. Oh, are you going to have more babies? Okay, let's see. Unexpected, girl. You kind of have to walk to a new way to make that happen. I see a baby. I see the possibility. There's some real sensitivity around that of having another baby. But it might kind of happen fast. And justice in the yes card I got. So if this is something that you really want in your heart, maybe just set your intention and it's just coming home to success and that there'll be enough money to provide for this baby or there'll be enough to have for this baby. I, I do see that happening if that's what you want. Yes. Great. Thank awesome. you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you for calling into the show, and I hope you have a beautiful rest of your week. You too. Thank you. Thank Bye-bye. you. Take care. So, Maureen, what is the number one question you get reading tarot? 
Well, number one, I would say, is about love. Am I ever going to meet the love of my life? And number two, of course, is money. Am I ever going to make the money that I would like to make in my life or have the abundance? So number one is love. Number two is money. Probably number three is health and family. And probably four is travel, maybe. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing tarot card readings, do you find that your intuition just gets stronger and stronger and stronger the most that you do, the more that you do the readings? Do you yeah, start... it just seems like it opens up more and more. The more I do, the more it uh, seems to open up. It's very exciting to me to be on a show like this with you, to hear your gifts of really being able to correct direct, connect directly with these loved ones on the other side and really see them and visualize them. I might see a person in my cards, but I don't always visualize them like you can see that that is a grandmother or whatever. So it's very affirming to me when uh, when that happens. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you. I love working with you because, you know, it's always been my experience when you have uh, uh, different kinds of readers on together, the energy gets heightened, and when people ask a question, we get information at the same time. It might be different information. It may come through differently, but it still brings that healing. It still brings that insight, brings a lot of love to the person who's asking. And I think it's just so incredibly powerful and such a gift to the person who's calling in to actually have two different readers tag team them and share what their insights are. All right. And I also like to go back to, you know, the the Collins to also connect with their own intuition and to look for their answers themselves to set their intention, watch their dreams, you know, record their dreams, see if they can't get the answers inside themselves, you know. And, and so many people, if they just open up to their intuition and sometimes prayer or meditation, they can find those answers. That's right. Well said. We have time to take a few more calls, so if you'd like to call in tonight to get a reading from Maureen McGill, the number is 1-267-519-1701. And so what do you have coming up in your world, Maureen? Do you have a lot of projects going on? I have a few projects going on right now, but one of the most exciting ones is writing the second book of collecting messages from loved ones who have died in any war. So if we have anybody out there who've lost a loved one, family member that has died in any war and had a beautiful dream about them, or maybe they had an experience where they sensed them in the room or heard their voice, or maybe in electronics, the lights came on and off, or maybe they um, heard that song come on the radio that was their song. And if they have any connections like that, to please email me at Maureen at livefromtheotherside.com. Thank you for that. So when you collect all these stories, does it change your life? Does it affect you in a heavy way or a light way? What do you go through when you're writing about these people and their stories? You know, this particular uh, experience of getting these messages have been just transforming to me from this heavy and grief place of young young couples who, you know, have um, been separated by death because he's died, you know, in either Iraq or Afghanistan. And the absolute transformation that these women feel when they have this message from their loved ones. I have a beautiful story right now of a widow who is at the site of her husband's uh, cemetery there in Arlington Cemetery, and it's the funeral and she's on her knees, and her loved one, he was a uh, skydiver in the Army, and um, it was a very hot July day when she was at his funeral, and there wasn't a bush that was moving or a tree that was moving. Everything was completely still. It was almost too still, you know, how that heavy humidity is. Mm -hmm. And she looked up in the sky when she was down on her knees at his gravesite, and it's like the, cl the clouds separated and she said, Maureen, this cool sweep of air just came from the top of my head out through my feet and toes. And I looked up and she goes, I knew that was him just skydiving right into this, you know, cemetery. And she said it brought the biggest smile to my face. And it's like I knew he was okay. 
And when I have a story like that, Ginger, it just transforms that heaviness of the grief into the lightness of being. I mean, I could feel her smile on the phone when she told me that. And she said, you know, the press, they want to know about how he died and, you know, how many kids do we have and this and that. And I can never tell them about this beautiful experience that I had right there at the graveside. So it's been really healing for me to get these stories and for so honored that these widows and widowers would share their story with me. I love that. So those of you listening, if you know people who have stories from their loved ones that are connecting, who've been in the military, please, please, please contact me and I'll hook you up with Maureen or you can find Maureen at Maureen at livefromtheotherside.com. We need books like this out there. So more people are aware and more healing takes place because we have such tumultuous energy on our planet right now. It's just ah, volatile all the time. It's just rough. So the sooner we can get books like yours out there with all that healing, love, vibration, I think the better this planet is, don't you? I think so. And also shows like you that you provide for your listeners and for you sharing your talents with listeners to really be that formal portal of communication as a medium to connect to the other side and bring the healing messages day to day. That's so beautiful. Continue with your gift. Thank you. (laughs) Well, same for you because we both share from a place of love, which I think is the most beautiful, beautiful thing you can do when you do this kind of work. It shouldn't be about the money. It shouldn't be about your own self gratification or being recognized or famous. It should be about, creating healing for somebody who's come to you and has said, I trust you to look inside of me and see what's going on and hold me in your heart and take good care of me while you're telling me how to kind of be aware of my paths and be aware of what's going on and do some healing for me. It's a huge responsibility, at least that's how I see it, to do that kind of thing. And as you know, Maureen, you're just handed so many different situations from people. You never know who's going to sit down at your table. And when you're starting to flip cards or you're tuning into those on the other side, you don't really know what you're walking into until you get into the meat of it. And then your own ethics and your own responsibility and your own love has to come shining through. Or, you know, the universe says, that's not cool. And we're going to make you kind of have to suffer a little because you're not doing something right there that's ethical and good and loving for the highest good of the person who sat down at your table. So Uh I think, yeah, between the two of us, I think um, there's a huge responsibility there being a reader. Well, I picked a card for you, Ginger, and it's funny. I picked two cards. One fell out. And one is Page of Wands. You are that messenger. Messenger through the phone, fax, and email. You're just the messenger. And who are you the messenger for? The star, which is the highest card in the deck in terms of your work. is really connected to hope, faith, light, beauty, and grace. And the star is the connection to the other side, that place of light and grace and beauty. So, And spirit, eight of wands, I got around you too. So keep up the great work, Ginger. It is an honor to be on your show. Tell your listeners they can connect with me at Maureen at livefromtheotherside.com. Or check out our first book live from the other side dot com. Thank you, you Maureen. So- <laughs> it's always a pleasure to talk to you and have you on the show and thank you for pulling cards for me. I love that and I love you. And for all of you listening tonight, as we always say on the Butterfly Effect Radio Show, go out into the world, share a smile, share a hug, give a compliment to someone who's having a rough day. Ripple out that energy, pay for somebody's lunch in the drive through go out and share it, spread it, pay it forward. And I wish you a beautiful night. And again, thank you, Maureen, for joining us tonight. Have a blessed Ginger. night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. <laughs> 